Hello Grade 11s, today we will look at types of banking. We will cover terms and concepts that will help us to choose a bank account that suits our needs. The most common type of bank account used for personal banking is a savings account. Most banks offer savings accounts, but each bank's savings account is different. Savings accounts differ in the costs they charge for transactions, the benefits offered in the account, and the target market they are aimed at. Each time we do something in our bank account, we are carrying out a transaction. Transactions are things like depositing checks, withdrawing cash, and making payments to other people. For this reason, savings accounts are often referred to as transactional savings accounts. Most banks charge for every transaction. When choosing an account, it is best to estimate what transactions we will make in a month. This will help us to work out the total charges on the bank account. One of the main benefits of a savings account is that money in the account earns interest. Other benefits of savings accounts include discounts at some shops. The target market is the group of people the account is aimed at. So, a target market could be teenagers, students, young adults, and people younger than 26 or older than 55 years. Let's look at some advantages of a savings account. Depositing money in a bank is safe from loss by theft and or fire, so it's better than keeping it in a box under the bed. A savings account is easily accessible. In other words, we can withdraw our money at an ATM or directly from the bank. Having some money in a savings account improves our credit record. A good credit record is important when applying for a loan or other finance. Now let's go through some disadvantages of savings accounts. Savings accounts often require a minimum balance. This means that to keep the account open, there always has to be a minimum amount of money in it. Some accounts also have very expensive fees. There may be certain limits on transactions per month. Most savings accounts pay low interest on the balances in the account. Another type of account is a current account, often called a check account. It works in a similar way to a transactional savings account. The main difference is that a current account allows the account holder to write out their own checks and by prior arrangement with the bank to have a negative balance called an overdraft. Current accounts also have advantages and disadvantages. In a check account, interest is calculated on daily balances. It is also possible to issue checks, although this is not a major benefit. Checks can often be stolen or forged, so they are risky. Some people can get an overdraft facility. This has a lower interest rate rather than a personal loan, and there are no finance charges to pay, making it a useful form of credit. Disadvantages of a check account include very low or no interest paid on credit balances. The transaction costs can be high and checks may be stolen and used fraudulently. Most bank accounts are linked to a bank card. The bank card allows customers to withdraw money from ATMs and to make purchases at shops without cash. Cards linked to transactional savings and current check accounts are debit cards. Cards will either have a magnetic strip or a microchip on them. When the card is used for a payment at a shop, the card links directly to the bank account through the card machine. The money is then deposited straight into a shop's bank account from the customer's account. Being able to pay with a card means that we don't need to carry too much cash. If the card is stolen, it must be reported to the bank immediately. The bank will be able to cancel the card so that criminals will not be able to access the account through the card. A debit card and a credit card look very similar. A debit card accesses funds in an account that has money available like a savings account. A credit card allows the customer to buy on credit. For instance, a credit card holder could have 5,000 Rand credit available to them. If they spend this, they will owe the bank 5,000 Rand plus interest. There are many advantages to using a credit card. 
Many credit cards can be used overseas to make international currency purchases. Some credit card companies offer you insurance on your purchases. Using a credit card wisely and paying it regularly will improve an individual's credit rating. Some credit cards offer promotional discounts on things like gym memberships and vacations. Credit cards can be very tempting to use and as a result, some people get themselves deep into debt. The cost of the credit card can be high and if payments aren't made on time, the credit card holder can get a bad credit record. Your credit record or rating is checked every time you apply for credit or a loan. If you have a bad or poor rating, you will not be given as much credit as you would want. A credit card will have a facility of a set amount. This is the amount of money that the financial institution is willing to lend the account holder. Let's look at how this works. Tembi has a credit card account with a credit facility of 2,000 Rand. She has not put any money into the account. This means she has an available balance of 2,000 Rand to spend. She purchases a TV for 1,900 Rand and charges it to the account, leaving an available balance of 100 Rand. She now has a debt of 1,900 Rand plus the interest that will be added by the financial institution. The interest Tembi will be charged depends on the credit agreement she has with the bank. Let's assume that this account charges 20% interest per annum and the interest is added at the end of each month. The interest rate per month will be equal to 20 over 100 divided by 12. We need to multiply the amount owing by this to calculate the amount of interest charged for the first month. 1,900 Rand times 20 over 100 divided by 12 gives an amount of 31 Rand and 73 cents. This means that the total amount owing at the end of the first month is 1,931 Rand and 73 cents. Every month, a credit card holder will be expected to pay off a portion of their debt. If they do not do the minimum payment as stated on their statement, more interest will be added to their account. When we pay with a credit card, we can either choose to pay for the purchase using the straight or budget facility. Straight is for the purchase of inexpensive items that can be paid off quickly. Budget is for expensive items. The credit card holder is given a longer period of time to pay off these purchases. Some banks will charge different interest rates for straight and budget. The last two accounts we will discuss are a 32-day notice account and a fixed deposit account. Both of these are short-term investment accounts. This means that we should only invest in them for a maximum period of five years. They generally have better interest rates than other accounts offered by banks. The main difference is how an account holder would gain access to their money. Money can be invested in a fixed deposit account for a fixed time period. The money will only be available at the end of the investment period. This means that if the term of the investment is set at 12 months, the account holder will only be able to access their money at the end of the 12-month period. Money can be invested in a 32-day notice account for an indefinite amount of time. The account holder needs to give the bank 32 days notice when they want to withdraw the money. Thank you for joining us Grade 11s. Remember the tasks for this section can be found in the interest, banking and inflation task video. You'll also be able to learn more about finance on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.